Hi, thanks for watching Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, today is going to be a doozy, so I hope and pray that you watch this whole video today because right now everybody needs to hear this message. <clears throat> How do we know when we love somebody? That's what I'm going to call this video. So the first thing I get asked a lot is, how do I know what love is? I died in 2001, which, hello, guess what I've got right here that I want to show you first before I go into all this. Here is my 168 page medical file when I died in the USA. It's got the ambulance report showing that I was unresponsive, technically dead, for over 14 minutes. It also shows how I was in ICU in the Cabarrus County Hospital, or which is now called the Atrium, on the 6th of May 2001. Actually, it was the 7th because I died at like 2 in the morning. <clears throat> so people ask me all the time, how can I feel any sort of positive emotion for the man who caused that? And I say to them, it's easy. When I look at friends who have come into my life over the past 55 years, family members, co-workers, neighbours, people ask me all the time, how easy is it for me to say I love them? Because today is the message of how much importance there is now on getting the word out there, how to love somebody. How do we identify what is love? How do we know that we have it within ourselves that we can then emit to another person like that mirror effect? If you don't know what that is, let me just go on a little tangent because you know I do like my little tangents. So the first little thing is, how do I know that I can love somebody so much? Because that mirror effect, what I hold inside my energy, I emit that out and it attracts the same frequency, the same energy comes back. So the more that we put out things like being kind, generous, forgiving, understanding, compassionate, the more we put that out there into that energetic field of the universe, the more that does come back to us. You know, I had a friend just the other day who said to me, my life's always been down the toilet, Linda. My, my life has always been in the crapper. And I said to him, the more you think that, the more you're going to attract that back in. Now let's just go scientific here, because I've studied neuropsychology. This neuroscience of our brain dictates through our synaptic network that what we think, we create. So when we're in negative headspaces, like somebody who's sarcastic, somebody who gossips, you know those talking behind your backers? Those people who are so conceited that they think they're so righteous in their own philosophies that they have no ability to learn new things and to grow. All those people today, I hope that you're watching this video because today I'm going to teach you what love is and how we love others. So, I've made a list as usual. And I wanted to say here, guys, it's 6 a.m. on Saturday, the 4th of September, 2021. Six o'clock in the morning for me. Because the great thing that I love about myself, haha, -ha, there's the word love, is that I do still connect with these guys who I, well, not those guys, these guys. Who are these guys? And there's me. And what's in that box? When I did my life review, and I think I was in my life review, you know, I'm just updating my book, Heaven Exposed. I was in that life review for years. Thousands and thousands of my own memories. So that's what I want to teach today. What I learned in heaven. Because I want people to learn this while they're on earth to get through all our dramas, our idiosyncrasies, 
get through our behaviors and really psychoanalyze ourselves and say, is this the person I want to be? Is this the person I want to reflect into others and make them a mirror of who I am? <coughs> so let's get to it. How do we know when we love somebody? I want to talk about some certain people today. I hope they don't take it personally because they're defeating the purpose of this video straight away if they do. I want to talk about a friend that I used to have. This person came into my life saying, oh my God, I want to be more spiritual. I want to be more um, able to connect with my own psychic abilities. But over the next two years, it, it, she demonstrated her own personal behaviors of being a very spiteful, angry and jealous person. She could not fathom what was out there pardon me because she was holding so much negative energy within her own self which then she emitted that on onto others so she was attracting in other people who were spiteful people who were gossipers so she had to have those ones in her life that she could talk about other people behind their back then let's go is to the guy who caused this event <coughs> 168 pages what sort of man was he he was very manipulative physically abusive hello I ended up dead physically abusive he told a lot of lies which he thought that were true but they seriously weren't so he was narcissistic so we've got two types of people straight away that I want to talk about today so how do we know when we love somebody? What does love really represent? And what do we seriously hold as that definition of the word love within ourselves where we can go and find a partner, a suitable partner for the rest of our lives? How do we feel that in our own children, in our parents, in our best friends, our neighbours, our co-workers and anyone else that we associate with? How do we find that love for a pet a plant, a vehicle. I'm going to tell you all that today. So there's a couple of words that I want to throw out there today. The first one is the word understanding. If you Google, what does love mean? One of the first words that comes up is understanding. Showing compassion. Being empathetic. So let's go there with some of these words. What does it mean to be understanding? I learnt it when I stood in the front of the big three for over a year going through my memories in this box of my life review. We put ourselves into the perspective of that other person. So what does that mean? It means put yourself in their shoes. If you've got a friend that is treating you badly put yourself into their shoes and try and walk a mile in their shoes and see what their life is like understanding comes from being able to comprehend what they're going through what are their hurts what are their pains what are their attributes what are their ambitions what are their goals what do they feel emotion towards compassion is when we realize that that person is separate to us and compassion is understanding that they have the free will and they have their own way of doing whatever it is that they have to do to get through this existence of this life plane what is empathy empathy comes from feeling that emotion that they would feel empathetic people are the ones who feel the emotions of others I'm a big empath when I go into my shopping centers I feel the energy of everybody else around me and some days I have to get out of there real fast because all I hear is the ill all I feel in my head is the anger the hurt 
the frustrations. I've got to go and get Joey's shorts for school next week. And I've only got two hours before I've got to take him to soccer. That frustration of impatience. So we understand what they feel, their emotions. Because when we're standing up here, after we die, we must feel that emotion. Because that is the driving force of our life force, is our emotions. So put yourself into their perspective. Feel what it would be like to be them. Feel their pains. Feel their hurts. Oh my God, Linda, you've had three husbands. How was that? I'm struggling with my own first divorce, said a lady one day to me in an email. I said, it's easy. Because I understand who those people were. I look for the good qualities in them and the bad. I don't judge who they are and what they did. But I allow them to be who they are without judging them. Because when we start to judge someone, we are very negative. Very negative. So, <clears throat> if I ever hurt anybody in my life, I always say sorry. So what does the word sorry mean? That means I understand that you are who you are. You've got all your own attributes, your characteristics and your personality. Because remember here, characteristics are what we're born with. <clears throat> personality is what society has imprinted onto us and it's the way we behave in society. That's a personality. Our characteristics are our, <clears throat> are our ingrained attributes. This is pure psychology, guys. Okay? So, if I have ever hurt somebody, I am truly sorry. Because I don't want to put out that ripple effect of negativity onto others, ever. I've never done that in my life, okay? It's being able to ask forgiveness for any hurts or pains that you've caused. Because what we're doing when we ask forgiveness, it means that we are allowing them to be who they are. I'm still going to be who I am. And I may look at that feedback and say, is this something that Linda needs to work on? Because I do that a lot of the time. I love getting good and bad feedback from people. Linda, you're doing this. How do you feel? See how that's nice? And it also used the word if, like if you watched the video I did the other day, how the word if works. So being grateful is to be thankful for this person being in your life. Because at the end of the day, it gives us that true reflection, like that mirror effect. If you don't know what I mean, I'll do a video on what does the mirror effect do. I'm putting out this energy and it attracts other similar energies. So be grateful for whoever comes into your life because generally they're showing a reflection of ourselves. So if you are a gossiper, if you talk about people behind their back, if you're spiteful and angry all the time, you will attract in all that anger and spite with other people. Some people do need those negative behaviours because they haven't worked on themselves to find out how to create a better life within them first. And that's why people rely on others. They need a partner. They need someone to look after them. They need somebody to give them, oh, I'm so sorry that happened to you because they don't know how to create their own self-worth when bad stuff happens. They don't stand in their own authority or their own power, which is our energy field. So they rely on others to create that for them. So <clears throat> we allow others to be who they are we understand who they are and then we can ask forgiveness through understanding 
and we can absolutely feel sorry in that empathetic way for that person because they have not yet identified how to balance that energy within themselves to create it positively instead of negatively so this friend that I had spiteful, angry, jealous type do I love her? absolutely I love every quality about her it's not something I personally would like to portray out there to others and I certainly wouldn't want to attract it into my life to create that drama within my own energy field but at the end of the day she shows me that she still have a, has a lot of hope where she can change in the future hope so be grateful for anything that comes into our lives be grateful and say you know what thank you so much for being who you are I am not judging you I am not accusing you I am allowing you to be the person that you were and are and strive to be so being grateful is part of the grace of God it says it in the Bible by the grace of God. What does that mean? Makes my eyes water. Because I'll tell you, that's what how much it affects me. Let me just wipe my eyes. Because I stood in the, um, the presence of God for over five years when I went home when I died. <clears throat> I understand this. I get it inside and it comes out of me like... I woke up with it this morning. Look, it's only 6 something a.m. Oh my God, and here I am already doing this video. So it's appreciating who everybody is around us. And we think to ourselves, you know what? I accept you without questioning. I can walk into that party with this friend who is so spiteful, angry, jealous, and I can walk up to her and say, my God, darling, I love you. I appreciate all that you are because I understand that she has got so many hurts, issues, pains, past traumas, all creating this big bubble of negativity within her, like a big black bubble that I see around people as their auras. And I can say, you know what, darling? I am willing to help you. I am willing to be your friend. But do not just think that's who you are there is so much more than being a negative person so we appreciate who people are we value them for who they are and we respect their free will and we respect their lives that they've had that's leading them on this life path because the first thing is we can never judge who does what in their life because we've all got our own life lessons to learn. Do I have to show the picture again? I have enough trouble working out my own life path and I've already seen it. Thank you so much for giving me that opportunity. Because everything in my life is an opportunity. Think of the opportunities that come when somebody comes into our lives and they're betraying, um, they're portraying all this negative emotion, attributes, qualities and personalities. And you know, you sit there, I look at my abusive neighbours who scream and rant and they smash their windows every day. And I sit there and I say, you know what, I love you. Because at this very time in the present, they have no other choice. Because they've never learnt the grace and love of God. They don't know how to appreciate their life. They don't know how to be compassionate or kind or generous. They don't know because they've never seen it. They've never held it in their hands and said, my God, this is so good. So 
So why do I have to judge them for? I allow them to be who they are. And I hope and pray that at some point they get that opportunity given to them to learn something so much more valuable, so much more worthy than the present existence that they're leading through this life path. But who am I to judge? Because I don't know what lessons they need to learn. Someone said to me one day, why do we even come into this existence for when heaven is so good? Love is so everywhere up there. Why do we come to this plane? Is this hell? I say, no, no. Think of it this way. Think of it this way. The first time you ever go to the beach, how do you feel? You're excited. You've got it beaming out of you like electricity. And you think, my God, I'm at the beach. I can't wait to get in the water. I want to feel the sand under my feet. And I want to feel the sun on my face getting sunburned. Now imagine the person who lives at the beach and they do that every day. Oh, yeah, I might go to the beach today. Oh, yeah, I might go down, stand in the water and see if I can find another shell to put in the other box on this sideboard. They get used to it. They get conditioned to it. So why do you think we come here where we do come across negativity in others or we portray it ourselves? Why do you think we come here for all those negative things? Because remember, it's yin-yang of the universe. There's negative and there's positive. And which side of the balance do you want to be on? Because how do we appreciate what is constant unless we're taken out of that equation to experience the other side so then we appreciate, we value, we see the worth of that unconditional love of heaven. That's why we come here. We come here to learn the value. We learn to respect what is love. Because if you are a religious person, you'll look in the Bible and the first thing it says in the Bible is, God is love. If you look at the Quran, if you look at the Kabbalah, the first thing they all say is, heaven or whatever they call that place that I call home, it is love. So how do we truly, truly feel it? Unless we come here to experience others' negativity. So what is unconditional love? Unconditional. It means there's no conditions on how much I love that person. I love you. I love them. I love them. I love everything. Even my mouse pad. My mouse for my computer. I love it. I love my bottle of water. We don't have to excuse why, judge why. Because I love it unconditionally. Because I seriously do not care about what it's been through or they have been through. I look at this computer mouse and I say, you know what? I appreciate you so much for the job that you do for me. You help me use my computer. Thank God we now live in a world with this society where we've got technology that I don't have to have something plugged into the keyboard every day. I can just click and it's done. So being grateful for all the bad. Being appreciative. I am so appreciative that now I'm in lockdown. I'm going to use this as an opportunity to look into myself. Am I a bad person? What do I do in my existence? Where am I leading myself to? What are my goals and ambitions? Where have I been in the past? Have I got past hurts that I need to fix now so I can get through it before I stand in front of the high council and I have to do it then? We have an opportunity right now with all this hatred, all these judgments and accusations on the planet because everybody's doing it. Well, 98% are. When you look at someone and they're judging you, feel that compassion. Feel that empathy. 
and say, you know what? You're only doing what you know with your limited beliefs. I hope that you change and become more positive. I hope that you get through whatever pains, hurts and traumas that you've had in your past and you realise that all of those seriously negative experiences were all opportunities to learn how to appreciate, how to be grateful and most of all how to love that thing or person. So do I love the man who caused this? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do I love that friend who virtually wrote me a three-page email saying how much she hated my guts? Absolutely I love her. Because I understand the situation that she's in. I feel her pains. <coughs> I feel his pain, his frustration, his fear. And most of all, I felt his controlling mannerisms, whereby he didn't want me to do things against my own free will. And at the end of the day, I sit there and I say, you know what, thank you so much for coming into my life. Thank you so much that I see these behaviours and I recognise that I do not want to be like that. I don't ever want to be a person who judges others. I do not ever want to be a person who gossips, puts ultimatums. If you do that, I'm going to do that. I never want to be that person. So thank God that I got those people in my life so I can learn, you know what, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be associated to that negativity. I don't want to be associated to that drama. So then we can flick that out of our lives and say, you know what, I'm sending you back to where you're from because my life isn't positive. My life is about loving others and giving it to them straight to the core where I can say, you know what, I hope you feel how much I'm loving you today. I appreciate everything about you. So people say to me, Linda, do you love Adolf Hitler? Look what he did. And my response to that is, do you honestly believe that he was that negative all the time? He had a woman in his life called Eva Brown. She must have seen something in him that wasn't portrayed in the media. You look at any mass murderer throughout history, they all had wives. Those wives must have had some sort of free will to love those people. Or there have been mass murderers that are female. So they've had men in their lives in comparison. So we look at others, guys. Don't judge. Don't accuse people. You did that. I'm going to blame you forever. When we blame someone else, we're actually creating all that within us. It shows what we are like. When I blame somebody else for doing something, my God, I sit there and I think, my God, why did you just blame that person for, Linda? Why are you accusing them? Oh my God, that guy just wrote a, run a red light. So work it out up here, guys, and say to yourself, my God, I'm the one who's got the issue, not them. Because 10 times out of 10, when we're treating somebody else negatively, it means that we're the negative person. So we have to look at ourselves, if we want, under free will. We've got to analyse ourselves and say, my God, I am so judgmental. I accuse all these people of doing things. Oh my God, I didn't even realise I'd do that. And then you ask yourself, do I want to be that person? Wow. 
And that's when you start raising up your vibration. And you start thinking, oh my God, now I feel I accept people. I'm feeling so much better. I feel light. And now I feel that, that pain I had in my shoulder. I thought I was nearly needing a massage. That pain in my shoulder is nearly gone. And then you realize we can't get injuries or sicknesses coming in. Because you look at the ascended masters like Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, even the saints, Mary Teresa, the ones who we talk about all the time. How often were they sick? Think about it. How often were those people sick? Because, you know, you read the Bible, Jesus was surrounded by thousands of people every day. Why didn't he ever get sick? Why didn't he ever have a broken leg, a broken arm or a sore finger? Because when we raise our vibration up and we fill ourselves with that unconditional gratitude, appreciation and most of all love of everything, those negative behaviours, which is also cancers, leukaemias, liver problems and all the rest of it, every injury, illness, etc. all operate at a lower vibration. They can't exist in our energy. You know, in 2017, I was diagnosed with a brain tumour. Actually, 2016. I was diagnosed with a brain tumour. I don't have a brain tumour now. I've got three MRIs that show it. And I've got two after I healed it. We can heal our own energies. Because this physical body is an energy field. Every single thing. You know, I was a sick kid. I had asthma when I was younger. I got eczema really bad. And I've now realized why I had those illnesses. Because I don't have them now. Because I'm not in that same emotional field. I'm in a higher vibration now. Where I get sick yes we all get viruses and illnesses and stuff but I heal through the grace of them as well because hello I've seen her many times she's healed me hello you know I saw her in the fit in the pool one day where's her picture where she was in the field that day in the pool I took my daughter to the pool and she turned up in the pool I'm just looking for my photo now there she is, the day she was in the pool. Now, that was in um, October 19. The pool was gone. It was just all her energy. So there are angels, spirit guides, deceased relatives. Hello, I see them every day. They come to us when we need help. So if we're truly trying to get out of this negative behavior... They will come and help us raise our vibration up because they give us that unconditional love. They don't judge, oh my God, what a nasty person they are. I never want to see them again. They don't give up on us like that because that's the other thing we do when we love somebody. We don't give up on them. We always hope that there's going to be something better in their lives, yeah? So if I saw the guy who did this to me I'd go up and hug him and say you know what I am so grateful you gave me the most powerful confirmation that I believe in something that's other than this existence I thank you so much for giving me that opportunity where I learnt so many lessons about who I am, who I want to be, and how I want to treat others in my life. Wow. I'd give him a hug. I'd kiss him on the cheek and say, I love you. Because I accept him without judgment. I hold on to all that compassion of understanding who he is. 
For ultimately, the worst thing somebody else can do to us is kill us. So how do I forgive him? Easy. Beautifully. Because I allow him to be who he is. Oh yeah, and I'm crying now because this emotion is so good that it makes you cry. I walk into churches and my eyes just water. So many people over the years, you know, my first husband said it, my daughter even said it when I took her into St. Stephen's Cathedral in the city a few months ago. She said, Mummy, why are you crying? I said, darling, because I just feel the energy in here. And it reminds me of when I went home. My daughter knows about the fact that I died. She talks to her about her friends all the time. When I stood in front of those three and I felt it to my core, that's the feeling I want to emit to everybody on the planet, regardless of what energy they're in, what negative space they're in. Because I give them that hope that there is more to this life there is something else out there that truly loves us so much that they allow us to be who we are. No judgment. No accusations. No ultimatums. Because they're so compassionate, understanding and forgiving of what our life has been to this point. So how do we get through negativity? First of all, we've got to identify what we've done. Sit down and analyse your behaviours. Do I treat people sarcastically? Do I abuse them? Do I do those knee-jerk reactions and vent out to people? Do I, oh God, sorry, I'm actually crying here. Do I actually be a person who reacts to events with emotion, outbursts, crying fits? Or do I sit there and I respond logically, using my head and saying, right, is this about my issue or is this truly their issue? And most times when people react, you know when you send someone a text and they reply in like, I don't know, three seconds? <laughs> Seriously. That's a reaction. That's using emotion. So there, this is all psychology, guys. When we react, we do those knee-jerk reactions, right? you got to sit there and you say, oh, my God, you must be going through so much pain. You must be so traumatized by something going on. And then we sit there and we work out, it's not my issue to fix that in you. Because it's only you who can identify that within yourself. And by allowing you, to, I've identified that you're negative. Like this friend who was, what did I call her? Spiteful, angry, jealous, the gossiping type. I sit there and I work her out and I said you know what darling at the end of the day I identify you have an issue and it's not for me to fix it because the only person who can fix Linda is Linda the only person I'll just make up a per person's name here Bob I hope there's no Bob's watching the only person who can fix Bob is Bob. Bob and Linda must recognise how we treat others and then we must want to change the behaviour. So this friend who's spiteful, angry, knee-jerk reactions, she used to reply to me like three seconds after I texted her. <laughs> See, I'm not emotionally attached to her because I love her so much that I allow her to be who she is without judgment. 
because most times guys and this is a doozy and I hope that you're still watching for this one the doozy is the reason why we judge somebody is because we're lacking our own self-worth our own self-respect our own self-appreciation and most of all self-love we never rely on God or these three Oops. don't rely on them to love you they are only merely a representation of what you put out Isn't that a big lesson for Saturday morning? 6.45 a.m. here. So my book is called Heal to Success. Heal yourself emotionally. Because we do have the ability to heal ourselves physically. Ask yourself how often you get sick. How many times you've got a sore finger, sore thumb, you've got some sort of illness with a major organ, blood, skin disorder. Ask yourself, what have you done in your own life to create that energy that's brought that into you? Because all illnesses and injuries operate at a lower vibrational field. I love quoting people. Dr. Joe Dispenza, he's got millions of followers. He actually did a seminar where he told people in the seminar that when we raise our vibrations up and we truly appreciate and respect and we're gratifying to others we can't get sick this man stood up in the seminar and he said my mum just died of cancer are you telling me she was a bad person that man didn't get it did he because he had so much negativity within himself he wasn't listening to what Tony um Tony said. He couldn't fathom it because he was still in a negative place himself. Wow. So how do I feel for that person? I feel compassion. I understand he hasn't ever learned how it feels to be accepting and non judgmental. How fast did he stand up and judge Tony Robbins? I feel sorry for him. And through that compassion and through that empathy, I forgive him for being who he is. I forgive him for never being afforded that opportunity to love somebody, to understand them, to feel that positive energy around himself. So I love him unconditionally for being who he is. So be grateful for anyone who comes into your life, guys. I've written down here, appreciating who they are and who you want to be. Who do you want to be? Do you want to be the person who does the knee-jerk reaction text three seconds after you get one? Do you want to be the person who backstabs people, talks about them behind their back, attacking people verbally, sarcastically, or even physically? Or do you want to strive to be a better person where we spread this love to others that emits from us because we've already found it within ourselves first? I've got a book called Heal to Success that outlines all the negative behaviours. It was three years in the writing that book. I started writing it when I started studying my PhD. <clears throat> all the psychology of why we hurt others. Because we can't heal at that within ourselves first. So guys, how do I feel this morning? It's not even 7am yet. It's Saturday morning. I'm going to go and have the best day today. Upload this to YouTube and hopefully you've watched the whole thing. <coughs> I 
I need a coffee. Wake up. I woke up this morning and it was beaming out of me. You know, I sat there, I was lying in bed, I woke up with this, oh my God, look at this feeling of love I've got for the world today. I've got to do a video. And I sat there and I thought, wow, I usually do my morning affirmations now. I am beautiful, I am young, I'm fit, I'm free, I'm healthy and I'm beautiful. Because that puts us on that right step for the whole day then, if we start out with our I am's, right? Try it. I am young, I'm free, I am beautiful and young. Wow, you go off and have a great day because we're building that energy even before we get out of bed. My car will run well today, I know. I'll get great phone calls from people today, I know. I will get emails from people giving me good feedback, I know. Because I'm already putting out that good, loving, respectful, unconditional energy to everybody already this morning makes you feel great so on that note guys i hope you've watched this video please consider buying my book heal to success it's only about 15 dollars or 20 dollars on my website but that was three years of psychology how to get through all that negativity that we do how do we even know that we gossip unless someone says hey do you realize that a gossiper is this type of person do you want to change that behavior Start learning your self-worth, stop learning your self-respect, your self-appreciation, your self-gratitude. And that all creates that emotion of love. Talk to you next guy. No, 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 start again. Maybe I should start again. It's going to be a great day for me today. Have a great day, guys, and I hope that you've learned something. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.